So every year, come November, the country's basically winding up for three things. X Factor Finals, Christmas, and the John Lewis advert. And last year wasn't really my bag because it was all about a kid who had a pet penguin and why you probably shouldn't keep a penguin as a pet. But this year, it just so happens I did my degree in space science, so finally I get to use it. And if you haven't seen yet, massive spoiler alert. It's basically the sad story of a, a young girl who uses her telescope to peep on this guy on the moon who's got a house there and he's out in his front porch and then ends up in summary sending a telescope to him via balloons so he can look back at her. Now I do love a good telescope and I use them quite a lot, but where is she getting this telescope that can make out a guy's face from all the way on the moon? So some basics of telescopes is that the magnification is based on the length of the tube and then the length of the eyepiece. As the light travels through this lens, it gets focused into a point. We call it the focal length. And also the eyepiece at the other end does exactly the same thing. To get the magnification of the telescope, all you do is divide the focal length of the tube by the focal length of the eyepiece. So if she's using the telescope that I think she's using, the focal length is gonna be about 700 millimeters of the scope. And let's give her the benefit of the doubt and say she used a high magnification eyepiece of around 10 millimeters. We plug that into our equation. It gives you a magnification of 70. So does this actually help at all with this telescope? The telescope that she's using basically gives you an image that looks a bit like this. A moon that almost fills the frame. And we use degrees a lot when we talk about distance because you can't really tell if something's really far away or something that's really small. Only how much of your field of view the thing actually takes up. So if we imagine that all around us is 360 degrees, all of that then can be divided up into smaller degrees and actually a full moon only takes up 0.5 degrees. And the moon's actually pretty big, it's 3,500 kilometers in diameter. So this guy's head that's on the moon, the man on the moon, his head would actually appear 16,700,000 times smaller than a full moon. So she'd need a telescope with a magnification of 5 million to actually see his head. So we could do a couple of things. We could change the length of the telescope, which would mean we need a 70 kilometer long telescope to be able to see his face. Or we could change the eyepiece and just go from 10 millimeters down to one the width of a human hair. But then there's another problem because the more you zoom in, the more you magnify, you can think of it like taking pictures on a, on a phone. That you zoom in and you zoom in, but you're not actually getting any closer. You're just blowing the image up. So after a while, the resolution and the quality of the image starts to go down. And there's a limit to the smaller size that the telescope can actually resolve. Say she didn't have a John Lewis telescope, say it was something like the Hubble Space Telescope, that has a mirror of 2.4 meters and can resolve something on the moon around 100 meters across. So to get a good view of our man on the moon, the girl will actually need a telescope around 300 meters across, which is absolutely crazy. The biggest telescope in the world is actually 10.4 meters. You definitely couldn't send either of those up on a balloon. But don't let this put you off buying a telescope for Christmas because there's loads of good things out there to see in the night sky. So if you want to know more, click on the links below to find out the recommendations of the telescopes that I would use for beginners and also the software where you can find out the things that go on in the night sky. So if you like this, give us a thumbs up and maybe subscribe and head over to www.youtube.com for more.